Right, we have a quorum and um, the, and we reached the appointed hour. This is the subcommittee meeting on um, district council ordinance amendment schedule three order. Before the meeting, we have received a request from Mr. Gary Fan asking to join this subcommittee. This is an application after the deadline. Probably we may conclude our discussion of the bill today. But concerning um, the delay in application, I think that's still acceptable. But I think the decision is in members' hands. So concerning Mr. Gary Fan's letter dated the 9th of October asking to join this subcommittee, do members have any objection? If not, then I take note of that and then members agree uh, to accepting Mr. Fan to join our subcommittee. Today's meeting is for the purpose of meeting the deputations and also the government officials. At the deadline, we received um, applications from, or notices from seven deputations, and then afterwards, two more wanted to come. Since we uh, have quite uh, some time, uh, quite quite a lot of time this morning, so I accept. I have accepted this request, but I don't think that's a precedent, a good precedent. A deadline is a deadline, so this is the. This will not be a precedent. A deadline is a deadline. Today's arrangement is just an exception. Okay, shall we invite the government officials into the room, and also the deputations too? Good morning. Today, the government officials attending our meeting are Mr. Gordon Lang, Deputy Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs, Ms. An Tang, Principal Assistant Secretary for Constitutional and Mainland Affairs, and Mr. Ronald Chan, Political Assistant. And also uh, from the Department of Justice, Ms. Selina Lau, Senior Government Counsel. Um, I will soon hand over the floor to the deputations or individuals. Now we have, um, before we do so, uh, we have uh, received a written submission from Dr. Yuan Mo of the Southern District Council, a member of the Southern District Council. Um, I'd like to remind the deputations that uh, when you, um, after you've come into our meeting room, you can, uh, say, pick up the earpiece so that you can listen more clearly. Uh, channel 1 is uh, Cantonese and Channel 2 is English. I'm now going to invite the deputations to speak. Each deputation should not speak for more than three minutes, and then afterwards I'll leave some time to members to discuss the uh, relevant issues. Um, after three minutes, the buzzer will sound, and I will ask you to stop. In fact, after, if you have a lot more to say, you can provide your written submission to the Secretariat. Let me remind you that your views, or let me remind you that you are not protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. So you can't enjoy the protection and privileges under that piece of uh, legislation. Ms. Emily Lau, uh, Chairman, 
Before we ask the deputations to speak, is it possible to ask the deputy secretary to speak to us on the paper just tabled this morning? This is in response to a quite heated discussion last time. Uh, I think it is better uh, to have the administration's explanation first to facilitate the discussion. Well, the deputations do not have a copy of this reply. They should be given a copy. I uh, agree with Ms. Assembly Lau. Concerning the reply we have just received, um, the Deputy Secretary, would you like to take us through that reply first? Yes, thank you, Chairman. First of all, we have uh, received a letter from the Secretariat um, which is a follow-up on the matters discussed on the 8th of October. There were there are two issues. At the last meeting, some members raised this point. In the District Council, should more seats be added? Say in Tongchong, the population is growing. Another view is about um, constituency T01. Should it be split? And there is also um, the request for information concerning any departure from the population benchmark. We have already responded to the Secretariat explaining the administration's position, first on the population benchmark. We have looked into um, the total number of um, population in the um, this um, constituencies of the council, um, islands district council. This is a projection as at the middle of 2015, and basing on that, we set the population quota. As for the district uh, islands district. 148,700. Um, we have about um, 17,000 pop, uh, population per one seat. So in the uh, Islands District Council, there should be 8.6 seats. We've already explained to the committee. Now the District Council will no more have any appointed seats in the future. Um, in view of the uh, workload of the District Council, we have decided that we will maintain 20 seats in the or rather we will maintain 10 seats in the Islands District Council. 10 is already more than 8.6 by 1.4 seats. In the islands district council, if more seats are added, um, that will not be just. That cannot be justified. If we look at other seventeen districts, we adopt the same yardstick to um, calculate the number of seats vis-à-vis uh, -vis the number of population. So um, ten seats uh, should be kept. And Mr. Wang Fok Khan's view was relayed to us. Uh, Mr. Wang Fok Khan's view was related to us by Mr. Tang Ka Piu. We take note of that. With regard to the boundary of uh, a constituency, it is the responsibility of the EAC, and we suggest that the view should could be referred to the EAC. Um, we have already attached. Um, an appendix um, showing the constituencies that had their um, uh, numbers above um, the quota by 25 percent. The EAC uh, has adopted an open attitude in consider such matters, and if any decision is made, it will be announced publicly. 
if you can look at if you may look at uh, NX2, uh, you can know the um, constituencies and also the um, deviation from the population quota and also the reasons. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Secretary. Uh, we move on uh, to um, the deputations first. Um, Mr. Lui Him Hoi of the Civic Party. Yes, I am the um, Kowloon East District Developer of the Civic Party. Um, I will uh, give um, uh, my view on the amendment of Schedule 3. According to the uh, Let's Go Brief 2013 um, concerning the District Council's uh, amendment of schedule, it is about the increase in number of seats and also uh, the review of boundaries of constituencies. Now, according to the uh, information provided, the administration continues to adhere to the benchmark of one seat per 17,000 people. We are of the view that the distribution of the seats um, is um, very different from the yardstick. If we look at the eastern district, if we look at the population projection 2013 to 2021 by 2015, in the Eastern District, it should be 585,000 odd uh, people. Uh, there should be 34 seats. But this term, uh, the uh, Eastern District Council has already 37 seats. As for Sam Shui Pokun, Tong Yun Long, and the North District, according to the government's benchmark, if seats are increased, the um, average that the population is still more than the benchmark per constituency. Um, equal and universal suffrage is important. It means uh, ex uh, the same uh, kind, say, same power, and uh, same rights, same power, and same value of each vote. The proposal of the administration is not in line with that principle. In the future, the amendment should be made. In Yunlong, five more seats should be added. Kun Tong, Sam Shui Po. Sha Tin and Sai Kong, three uh, seats each. Yao Chi Mong, Kowloon City, two seats each. Chin Wan Kwai Cheng, one seat each. Uh, in relation to population, number of seats of some district councils should be cut. Wen Chai, Southern District and Islands, one seat should be cut. And the Eastern District, um, we propose to cut three seats. As for some constituencies, they do have, uh, or, um, they, or rather, some districts. They do have ex official members, and therefore, um, they um, represent a small num number of population. And if the ex official seats cause the decline in the number of elected seats, that is unreasonable. Um, in the long term, ex official seats should be abolished. Next. Is Mr. Choi Yu Cheng of the Democratic Party. Um, our view has been submitted in uh, our view in writing has been submitted to the subcommittee yesterday. Uh, I want to highlight two uh, several points. First, concerning the number of seats, uh, with any increase in population, some seats are added. Uh, that is rather mechanical. In some district. Uh, in some districts, because of the geographical expanse of the community or the uh, integrity of the community, the number of seats should be changed accordingly. And that is an even more important principle, and that is um, the yardstick of 17,000 per seat should be adhered to. Uh, the, the, at present, the administration just adds seats without cutting seats. And that is. Migration of population, say from the uh, from Kowloon and I and Hong Kong Island to the new territories. Yet the administration does not cut the uh, number of seats in districts where the population has declined. In some 
constituencies, the number uh, that there's um, actual number of population is smaller than the benchmark substantially. The Democratic Party is a view that the number of seats should be adjusted accordingly, uh, either upwards or downwards. Uh, the administration should adhere to the population benchmark or quota. The second point is, is about the demarcation of the constituency boundaries. The administration has emphasized that it is not a political exercise, but in fact, we know that the EAC has to rely on the district officer in relation to initial views concerning the uh, draft um, demarcations as well as the political analysis. If there is no element of politics, the administration is indeed trying to de deceive us. In the past, we used to have um, councillors from the democratic camp having their constituencies being split into three, and it would become difficult for them to be re-elected. So I think the views uh, submitted by the DO to the EAC should be made transparent and public. I think uh, it will become a very important issue, and the government must make sure that there will be transparency and fairness. And thirdly, we want to talk about the methodology of election. We have a single seat, single vote system. As a result, the district council members would only set their eyes on very narrow interests. And as a result, we also have to undergo very frequent redrawing of the boundaries. Therefore, we need to introduce the proportional representation system. This will address all the problems. And then DC members will also adopt at least a broader view, at least be covering the district as a whole. Miss, uh, there must be a early review. Mr. Choi, your time is up. Next, uh, Mr. Raymond Ho, a member of the Saikung District Council. Good morning, members. Um, earlier on, we have talked to the other colleagues in the Saikung District Council, as well as the representatives from different housing developments. Um, as far as the population projection is concerned, I think the government's figures are far cry from those assessed by the community. In Chen Kuan O, I think we have got some um, objective data to prove how many people are residing there. I think the property management agencies are more concerned about the um, population size than the government. Every year, Population managers would give the figures to the district office, but then the figures announced would usually be very different from our figures, say as much as 10,000. If the government cannot tell us about the basis of the assessment, um, it would be very difficult. And then for Annex 4 to the paper tabled today, uh, for us in Sai Kung, I think there is always a departure from the population quota. Sometimes we may be minus 30% from population quota, sometimes over 30% on top of the population quota. So maybe for rural areas, we can cut the number of seats so that we can have more seats for the urban area. Um, it is said that um, there will be three more seats for Sai Kung. I think they should all go to Chang Kwan O. Like the Lohas Park, and then for Yutming Estate and another housing development in Chang Kwan O, I think again they can form a new constituency. And then the re um, we have we can also have a third constituency for a newly completed public housing estate. At the same time, we hope that uh, when the administration is to deal with the drawing of the boundaries, make sure that the um, integrity of the constituencies can be respected so that we can address the problems in Chang Kun O and Sai Kong. In this way, um, 
we don't have to go to different polling stations, and we may easily uh, make a mistake because sometimes um, a housing uh, development is divided into two constituencies. And then for Changquan O, we have this very uh, special characteristic. A lot of sites have been sold, and then piling work is undergoing, and you can have an idea as to when the population take, uh, intake will take place. But I'm afraid that they are not being factored in um, for the uh, population projection, and this is a bad habit because by the time there is an election, the actual population size may be double that of the originally projected population size. Next, from the Islands District Council, um, the Vice Chairman, Ms. Chao Chin He. Thank you. Uh, I have already submitted my views to the Legislative Council. Um, it is said that uh, for the fifth uh, district council term, it is said that um, in nine different uh, district councils, there should be an increase of 19 elected seats according um, to the DC Ordinance Amendment Schedule 3, Order 2013. The Islands District Council thinks that in the light of the actual circumstances, we should have one additional elected seat so that we have a total of 11 for the following reasons. First of all, we cover a large area. The major function of district councils is to implement district administration. District councillors must be close to their electors so that they can understand the sentiments. But then for the Islands District, we cover a large area. Many islands are not directly connected by any means of transport, and different islands have different characteristics and different cultures. Therefore, ever since we have had district board or district council elections, the administration has, in the light of the circumstances of the remoteness of our islands like Lama, Po Toi, Ping Chow and Heling Chow, allowed us to um, depart from the population quota of 17,000 so that we have a people-oriented uh, mechanism so that we can be flexible and then we can allow the sentiments of the um, remote um, areas um, to reach uh, the administration. And since 1997, uh, we have got the Tongchung New Town. The population keeps growing. In fact, their residents come from different districts, different classes, and different races. And they are very different from the rural population of the islands. Tongchung has become a uh, new town, a small uh, area of it on its own. And since 1999, the government has been increasing the seats for Tongchung. Um, for every term, and until now, we have got four elected seats. And uh, I hope that there will be an additional seat for the Islands District Council uh, because of our um, area, our population growth. And in fact, we should depart from the 17,000 population quota. We should keep the total number of the um, elected seats. And in fact, for Tong Chong, we have got 28 blocks of public housing, population 46,000. HOS, 5 blocks, 7,920 people. Private housing block 38, population 37,000. The whole population is exceeding 90,000. So we are entitled to five seats. So please pay a such visit so that you really understand what it is like in the islands district. Thank you, Mr. Cha. Next, Mr. Kwok Chung Men. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've paid attention to the uh, speech of the um, secretary. Uh, sorry. Uh, please continue. Um, 17,000 being the population quota, uh, 19 elected seats only. I don't think we can deal with the growing uh, burden of the district council work. It is said that there has been general support. In other words, there isn't any unanimous uh, support. Uh, what is understood is that uh, we have got too few elected seats uh, in Islands District Council. And then in paragraph 5, we are, if we agree, then it means that 
it has been said that um, once the LegCo agrees, then there will be the demarcation of constituency boundaries. Um, but I think the government is not going to change anything. That's all about my comments on the speech. Mr. Chen Hanpeng and Mr. Tan Kao Piu have said that um, between 2015 and 2019, we have got 110 to 120,000 uh, residents. Four seats will be too few. And then if we don't address the problem, the same will happen to Hong Shui Q and other NDA. And then for Yunlong, they may have well over 50 uh, district councillors. They can just put matters to the vote with no time for discussion. And then um, maybe I think uh, perhaps uh, we can make, turn the district councils into something like a legislative council. Well, in fact, for the islands district, maybe we can disband with the demarcation constituency areas. Um, we just have one single constituency to elect uh, 10 uh, elected members. Then we won't uh, need to change the total number of elected councillors, 431. So maybe in the future, we can just have the PR system and then we'll return all the district council members. Mr. Chairman, I hope you can help me to ask the administration. Um, for the 2019 election, uh, will it be triggered by this term of the government or will it only be taken up by the new term of the government in a hasty manner? Thank you. Next, Mr. Yu Hon-Lun. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I speak on behalf of Chang Kwan O Community Services and Planning Development Committee. I speak on behalf of Mr. Yu. I think uh, we're concerned about who will um, stand in the elections for the district councils. A word about the boundaries. Well, the residents and also the people's representatives will be interested to know where the demarcations can be finalized. Because we're interested to know about the candidates, the potential candidates, and also those who may have vested interests. And I want to know whether we have clear guidelines as to how to change the number of seats. 17,000 is, of course, the population quota. But then for both the public and the private sectors, say, for example, in Changsha Wan, we may have a few HOS blocks. Um, developed on a small site, will that affect um, the demarcation exercise? Because according to the paper submitted, it is said that we have to give attention to the natural characteristics as well as the characteristics of the community. So we want to know more about such criteria. And then a further word on the demarcation of boundaries. There are different problems for different districts. For Yaochun Mong and Kowloon City, they have a more serious problem of subdivided units. And as a result, we might have the problem of the planting of votes. So for SDUs, there may be many people living in the same flat. I want to know if the administration has got a way to deal with the problem. And then when there are more district council members, in the district uh, will have a bearing on the allocation of resources. And then at the district level for Kowloon City, for the Kai Tech development, it seems that the three stakeholders, Kowloon City, Kun Tong, and Wang Tai Xin, may all want to take on Kai Tech development. Uh, it is a matter of concern because the same problem may um, happen in other districts. Um, for the same site, uh, there may be different intended uses. And as a result of the disagreement, um, there may be a lagging behind of the development because we have to consult the people. Uh, I also want to state uh, other views. Say, with the um, cancellation of Appointed seats. Uh, is there any? What is the actual plan, and what is the justification? Now, um, the threshold, uh, the minimum number of subscribers is fifteen. 
Um, will you um, increase the number of subscribers? Next, Mr. Cheng Si Lut of the uh, Labour Party. Now concerning the uh, boundaries of the problems arising from the boundaries of the district councils, they are the result of the um, system. Um, this is a single seat, a single vote system. There are many uh, small constituencies. Um, it it um, breaks up the community, and one cannot look at the matter from a more um, a macro perspective. The small district councils, um, you may have just uh, two or three constituencies um, across a few streets, and you also need to carve up some housing estates into uh, two or three constituencies, and that uh, affects the integrity of the community. And in some um, rural communities, um, there are only um, small populations. As a result, uh, the single seat, single vote system is not appropriate. The single vote system, single vote, uh, single seat system, um, is um, based on first past the post arrangement, and you therefore, and the system therefore cannot accommodate minority views. If there can be say. A uh, big district council, say for example, the whole district council as one single constituency, and seats can be elected by uh, representative proportional arrangement. It will be more appropriate. Or you can have several significant constituencies within one district council, in order to reflect um, different uh, and pluralistic views. There is a big difference between big constituency, big district councils, and small district councils. Wen Chai is a case in point. In overseas countries, uh, their local uh, councils uh, may not be based on the number of population. I think there can be a minimum number of seats for each district council, and then the number of seats will be added. Uh, after the, there is any uh, growth in population, there is no need uh, to move. There is no need uh, to, to try to mess with uh, the arrangements. Up till now, uh, there has been no breakthrough in district administration. There should be delegation with power, delegation of power to the district councils by giving them financial resources and manpower resources. Next, Mr. Wong Fok Khan, a member of the Islands District Council. Sorry, uh, Speaker, not coming through. Yeah. I'm elected um, District Councillor of uh, TO1 constituency. Now, in Lantau, we have Mui Wo, Tai Yu, uh, South, Lantau South, and neighboring islands, um, Tai O and Tong Chong. Because of the uh, district council's ordinance, the constituency is drawn up according to population. Zero five and zero seven um, mer were merged, and it becomes T O one of Lantau. There are about seven thousand voters. They are spread out in the whole of Lantau, and T O one is as big as Hong Kong Island. It covers the sea, the land. And also under the uh, land and under the sea, and also on the sky in the sky. Uh, some are not care uh, are not cared for. Say, for example, Seku Chao Fan Lao Tai O somewhat. So um, the villages over there, and also the uh, monasteries. And they are really remote. And they cannot be covered by the single district councillor, and some can only be. Some um, places in the constituency can only 
be um, access on foot, and if you drive from Muiwo to uh, Taiyo, uh, and uh, a round trip uh, will cost you 44 kilometers. Now, with the opening of the uh, Qingma Bridge, there is rise in population. In Taiyo, this is um, a good place for uh, nature and conservation. People are moving back to uh, Taiyo. And government has sold land in uh, Lantau South. I ask uh, T O one um, constituency should be split into two, according to the demarcation in 1990. T O one is very broad; uh, people cannot get the support of the district councillors. T O one is unfair. It is as big as the Hong Kong Island. Um, how can we approve? How can a single district council provide uh, service to the residents? Now, eight have given their views. I now give the floor to the deputy um, secretary to answer the question, and then I will uh, uh, um, open the floor to members. See if they would like to. Uh, exchange views of the deputations. Uh, the deputy secretary. I've noticed that uh, there are several major points. First, the uh, adjustment of constituency according to population. And there is suggestion that the adjustment should be upwards or downwards not just upwards only, and also whether the population projection is in line with the reality. And the um, third area in relation to population is whether uh, remote uh, constituencies should be exempted from the population quota. And then for individual constituencies, say, for example, Tong Chong, and also uh, Lantau South uh, or Lantau T01. Um, it's about individual uh, constituency and its population. Now, um, first, whether adjustments can be upwards or downwards. In our paper, we explain that if we just base it on population, it can be adjusted upwards or downwards. Our proposal at present only adjusts upwards the constituencies because in the future there will be no appointed seats. And in view of the heavy workload of the district councils, we propose that in today in, in the present exercise we will increase the number of seats um, even if uh, by calculating population some seats should be cut we believe that we should maintain those seats as for the difference between the estimate and the actual number of population according to our mechanism population projection is a very detailed work it is led by the planning department. There is a working group uh, covering uh, different departments, including lands department and um, housing and also other information. We base it on so that the uh, sale of land, the issue of occupation permits, the uh, speed of construction, and we also estimate the uh, completed um, units and also the moving in of population. That is um, a basis for making the estimate. Sometimes um, the actual number may be different from the projected number. There are many factors contributing to that. We should adopt an objective and scientific and uniform approach in estimating the population, whether remote. Uh, constituency should be exempted from the population quota. This has always been taken into account, and there are also examples. 
this is done because of the geographical situation and the circumstances of various communities. Adjustments have been made accordingly. In the next uh, step of drawing up boundaries, uh, constituency boundaries, the uh, EAC has a mechanism of engaging the public, and you can give your views to them. And that, uh, and there is a view that uh, whether Tung Chong should be split or TO One should be split, this uh, should be considered by the EAC. At present, our task should focus on the um, number of seats within the boundary of each district council, and uh, the seats will be adjusted according to population. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lee Kam Tim has just arrived, and I give him a chance to speak. You have three minutes, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Lee Kam Tim. I am uh, the um, president of the Rights of People's Livelihood and Legal Association, Hong Kong. We hope that there will be more elected seats in the district councils. Um, if there is any appointed seat, it will be regrettable. We have noticed that there are many. There were many district appointed district councillors who were just going through the motion. They didn't uh, contribute much to serve the local communities, nor do they reflect the views of the people. Looking at the minutes. Of the district councils, we can see that the attendance rate of some appointed members were low. As for district councillors, they are more proactive. They have to face their constituents. They are more active in serving the community. Whatever um, political parties they belong, they have to get votes to keep their seats. Therefore, they are very enthusiastic in serving the people. The appointed members have not gone through any election. They are um, just one. Uh, they 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 are just going through the motion. The government may just consider giving out uh, medals to them, and therefore they are appointed. I think more uh, should be done in to encourage uh, more elected uh, members. Okay, um, I open the floor to members, and members may uh, exchange their views with the deputations. Mr. To, thank you, Chairman. I thank the deputations and um, um, including the district councillors for coming. Uh, in particular, uh, those who uh, come from the rural area. I want to speak to the system rather than uh, on the uh, parties. There are certain seats which we uh, really cannot stand for election. Say, um, Lantau is very Tong Chong is very different from the rest of Lantau. Tong Chong is a new town. Its population is growing fast, and the islands district. Is very big geographically speaking. I want to ask Mr. Wang Fokan, in a month, how much do you spend on uh, uh, petrol? Uh, you serve a big geographical area because of the inflexible um, decision of the. Um, Administration and the administration blame it on the EAC because of the inflexibility. You have to um, go round Lantau on your own, whereas in Tong Chong uh, there is a big population, but there are only few district councillors. In say uh, Sai Kong in Tai Po, you allow. A constituency of just six thousand people because of um, the, the geographical factor, but will you also do the same for 
Lantau, and after the abolition of appointed seats, four appointed seats will be removed. You said that uh, population is uh, according to population, it should be eight point six, but uh, you have to consider the geographical expense of uh, the constituency. I want to ask Mr. Wong, how much did you spend uh, on uh, petrol per month? Uh, thank you for your concern, Ms. Ho. Well, um, I only spent $4,000 for the petrol when I drive my car. But then sometimes uh, people would complain in particular, um, when the administration would like to demolish um, certain burial grounds, then I have to walk to approach the complainants. For Sea Range, I have never been there, um, although I've been a member for nine years. Uh, it is quite inaccessible. Now, I have uh, obtained um, the demarcation map in 1990. There used to be two different constituency areas. Now, in fact, um, my constituency covers an area two times that of the Hong Kong island, including the waters. I had attempted to uh, learn motorcycling and get a license, but I've been advised against it. It's too risky. Um, but I will still work hard uh, in my district. Thank you. Ms. Emily Lang. Thank you, uh, deputations, for coming to tell us what you think. Uh, we have already got a tabled paper copy to, to the deputations. So please take a look of the first page of the response from the administration. I think it is quite different from what was given orally a moment ago. It is said that after um, abolishing the appointed seats, uh, considering that, and also this might affect the operation of the district councils, and it is expected that district councils will play a more important role in district administration. Just now, he was saying merely that there would be more work. In fact, we have always asked for a more important role, like um, uh, personal matters. Now, with the abolition of the municipal councils, the district councils remain advisory in nature. So in the letter, it is said that it is expected that district councils will play a more important role in terms of district administration. More powers, more functions or what? Please elaborate. Deputy Secretary, or rather the yeah, Deputy Secretary, we have made this statement. This is because in the past, uh, district councils have started to take on more tasks. Say, for example, money works projects. And then last year, we had the $100 million signature project. District councils would have their own say as to what is to be done with their sort of money. Such functions were non-existent in the past. So in the light of such trends, uh, we have made this statement in our uh, paper as to in the as to whether further functions will be taken on by the district councils. Well, in fact, it has been considered by administration all the time. Emily Lau, considering the Deputy Secretary's reply, does any among anybody uh, wish to say anything in reply among the deputations? Ms. Chow Chin Hung. Thank you. At one minute for you. The Deputy Secretary. Well, allow me to talk about the $100 million project. Do you understand that for the islands district, we have got so much area to cover? And then the district councillors proposed 13 projects. Now, for a long time, the administration has ignored the needs of the islands district. And then there was this problem of coordination. We tried to address the most urgent needs. In fact, for this purpose, we had had one, uh, 10 uh, meetings, and there were also proper consultation forums. We have such a large area, and yet whenever we have our meetings, we have to come back to the central. So if you talk about enhancing our functions, um, to answer Mrs. Ho's question, other than Lantau, 
for other district council members. Almost on a daily basis, we have to come out, come to the urban area to attend meetings. In fact, our travel expenses exceed $3,000 a month. Mr. Choi Yu Cheng, the Deputy Secretary, referred to the uh, projects and the $100 million signature project. Well, the administration abolished the two municipal councils, and it was said that the functions of the municipal councils should gradually be handed over to the district councils. They are very different from the minor works projects. They are different from enhancing our role in terms of district administration. And then the district uh, the Deputy Secretary said that uh, we couldn't uh, adjust both upwards and downwards the number of seats. Now, take the Eastern District Council as an example. Even if you cut the number of seats by a few, they're still larger than many other district councils. So I think there must be a review to make sure that for each district council, we all have a reasonable number of elected seats. Now, you will only increase the number of seats, but not lower uh, the number. I think it is illogical. Mr. Chen, it is said that for each district council, we have got $100 million. I think this is quite different from what happened uh, when we had the municipal councils. Um, in the past, the municipal councils operated in such a way that they are financially autonomous and they had revenue from the rates uh, and license fees. And just now, we talked about the minor works projects. They are of a small scale. Um, I think this is a far cry from delegating the powers. I think we only operate within the four uh, functions of uh, environmental, hygiene, and others. Ms. Claudia Mo. Thank you, deputations, for coming to tell us uh, from your practical experience. You may very well air your comments, but then the officials would only repeat their standard or model answers. It is most discouraging. Now, the deputy secretary has admitted that according to the mechanism, we're supposed to be able to adjust both downwards and upwards the number of seats. But then it is. Uh, you also said that you would not be decreasing the number of seats purely for the mathematical reason, because there wouldn't be any more appointed seats. And at the same time, you insisted that there should be one seat for every 17,000 people. Well, geographically speaking, I think Mr. Wong's case is clear, and the same is true for Ms. Charles' um, arguments. I can expect the same answer from you even if I press you again. For people coming to Len, uh, to the Central to have a meeting from Lantau, you spend $3,000. And Mr. Wong, you spend $4,000 just on petrol. It is really uh, alarming. The air is so large and the places are so remote. So the administration has already decided on it. And we are only having um, routine discussion and we are only going through the motions. Mr. Yu asked a valid question. For densely populated areas, we have subdivided units. We may easily have seven different surnames. Uh, for 13 different voters in a very small unit. So how come that you should be so stubborn about adhering to the population quota? Mr. Leung, I think it's a matter of how the population is forecast. Um, different departments have different sources of information. And then in the light of the actual population sizes, and on the basis of the number of housing units, we try to forecast the population size. Ms. Tang, anything to add? Yes, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leung already said that for our population forecast is based on a working group led by the planning department. The working group is composed of different members, like the housing department, uh, RVD, etc. So we'll look at the number of residential units in the area. Sometimes the uh, councillors may have a different 
views. Other than the number of residential units, we have to look at the average household size as well as the occupancy rate. According to the planning department's forecast, according to the 2011 population census, sometimes the vacancy rate is high. In other words, you may know the total number of residential units. Even if you multiplied it with the household size, you may actually get the actual figure. So through the census, um, we have to randomly pick one out of ten units to do a survey, and then this is giving us a more objective basis. So that not just for the islands district, we can have the population forecast for all the districts. Mr. Yu, Yu Hon Wing, uh, do you have such, such an answer? Mr. Yu, uh, what is your comment? Mr. Yu, you talked about subdivided units. Now, what do you find? Uh, how do you find her answer? Of course, not quite acceptable, because for the SDUs, they may also exist in industrial buildings, though it would be illegal to do so. So when you consider the population size, do you also take this into account? And then um, do you have more concrete information to convince the public that your assessment, your forecast is accurate? Ms. Mo, anything to add? I hope the officials can give an answer. If I may also add to the answer, of course, we haven't got the figures for all the districts. For the islands district, um, the figures are such that According to the Rating and Valuation Department, of course, the case would differ from one housing development to another. The highest occupancy rate is 80%. Uh, for T04, they try to look at the number of housing developments. And then on the basis of the 2011 population census, they will look at the occupancy rate, so the forecast is quite accurate. Mr. Leung Chi Chang, um, for Annex 6, we have got the population size of the islands district, as well as the degree of departure from the population quota. Mr. Wong Fu Ken told us that for his own constituency, it used to be two different constituencies. It will be difficult for me to understand. I think the figures given here were the figures before the latest term of uh, DC. So even though there is a departure of minus 64 percent, you will still create a constituency. Now for Tung Chung, we have got Tung Chung North. It is heard that their population size will grow to 50,000. Um, in other words, the population will grow substantially. In other words, we have to ask this question. How come that the administration is not do the same to Tung Chung? You used to create a constituency for just a few thousand people. Now you have got tens of thousands of people, and yet you are not creating an additional constituency. So is it because of the local characteristics? It seems that you are applying a different yardstick. Um, sometimes the figures, the size, sometimes the local characteristics. Um, Deputy Secretary, uh, allow me to say that we'll look at the total population in the district council. And perhaps you may want to turn to the relevant paper. No, no, no. Even back then, Deputy Secretary, you didn't have the full population quota. You still gave them 10 district council member seats. So why would you be adhering to the mathematics uh, only? Now, for Yunnan, we haven't got sufficient um, elected seats. You need to increase the number of seats for us in Yunnan. Now, first of all, we'll look at the total population uh, forecast for the entire district. 
and then by middle of 2015, we have got 148,700 in the islands district. And um, in the past, for the number of elected seats, they already exceeded that generated by applying the population quota. It shows that uh, we give special consideration to the unique characteristics of the islands district. In the past, it is true that um, Tong Chung's population grew rapidly um, because it has grown from a new development area. As for the total number of elected seats of the islands district, there is there has been an increase. At the present stage, we are, uh, we are to increase the seats for the whole district council. And after the seats have been added, then is the step of drawing up the boundaries of the constituencies within the district council. That's the work of the EAC. That, this is a two-step task. You need to distinguish the two steps. As for today's uh, point of contention in Tong Chong. The argument is that Tong Chong's population is growing. Maybe, say, uh, 2016, 2019 population will continue to increase. But you need to know that when uh, we increase the population, we have a certain timetable. Now, at present, our timetable is mid 2015. If we look at 2019, 2020, and further down the road, that is also not accurate. The further the dates, the greater the um, um, digression or discrepancies. And from the election point of view, that is also not right. We should adopt the same time frame for every district. Our time frame is 2015. And that is a requirement of the law, and that is the uh, nearest estimate before the election, and that uh, is in that is uh, uh, that is an established practice. As for say a particular constituency, T O five, T O six, or Tong Chong. Now you may say uh, this is my guess for T O four, and this is your guess for T O four. We are different, but that is a common. Uh, commonly seen um, disputes. Now we uh, base on actual number to make the uh, forecast, and that is done by an interdepartmental effort. Now, uh, Mr. Tan Kapil, now the administration says that the, the law requires that the forecast is based on 2015. But according to Madam Chow, um, at present, the population is 90,000 is good enough for five constituencies. In 2016, uh, population is coming. I come from Tong Chong, and they are putting up new blocks. You say people will not move in, and it's really uh, contradictory. But the government is concerned about vacancies and also housing supply. How can they say that um, people won't move in? At present, it's or there are already 90,000 people, and the population will soon, will soon grow to 100,000. And you need to look into that. And also, you pass the buck to the EAC. But the time is crucial. You are to set the number of seats for each district. Uh, you need to make changes according to the views of the people. If you fix the numbers, then you cannot solve the problem for T01. Who will, whoever will be the uh, district councillor for T01, um, you really need to deal with a lot of things, say uh, road, construction, change of land use, change of planning, uh, change or uh, building of sewers and drains. Uh, you, you will consult the district councillor. 
And if the district councillor doesn't have enough uh, information or if his assessment is of the situation is not right, that may harm social harmony. The district councillors are receiving these notices uh, and uh, consultation letters from the government, and they, they need to work and they need to call, uh, talk to the people. Uh, you can't just say, uh, ask Mr. Uh, we suggest Mr. Wong to refer this to uh, the EAC, but the EAC doesn't deal with these matters. The Deputy Secretary, I, I can only stress that that is the arrangement within uh, our system. Now, concerning the rise in population of Tong Chong at present, some uh, internal uh, forecasts. Is different uh, from some of the numbers mentioned by uh, other uh, people. Now they say there are ninety thousand people living in Tongchong, according to our estimate. What is the difference? I think there is a difference about twenty thousand, not as many as ninety thousand. You say just seventy thousand in Tongchong. Uh, can you repeat that? Seven, just seventy thousand people living in Tongchong. The actual number is still under calculation, but uh, roughly speaking, the number is about 80,000. You say uh, now or by 2015? It is uh, the middle of 2015, not now. Uh, members mentioned uh, time and again that there will be new housing estates in Tongchong, both public housing estates and private housing estates 55A, 55B, and 56. Um, the planning department is aware of that in their uh, calculation they need to base on uh, the database, housing database. They also have the date for completion and date of population intake. According to um, the requirement of the law, if we need to look at the horizon of mid-2015, some housing estates uh, are, will only be completed after 2015, not to say population um, intake. Um, that will take about another one to two years. As for the take up rate of uh, private housing estates, they are different. It is different from the public housing estates, but we have all taken that into account. I give you one minute. Uh, it's just on number, okay? Just on number. I think they have missed area thirty nine. You didn't mention area thirty nine. Oh, that's all I want to say, Mr. Chong. I have to declare interest because I'm a district councillor, and I was uh, the chairman of a district council. Uh, take the Eastern District Council as an example. It is not the biggest district. It is just as big as Cha Tin. After adjustment, if we uh, given some of our constituencies of Wen Chai, we are the third or the fourth or biggest district council. I think that's not the problem. I think the problem with the district council is the support given by the district office. We've never talked about support given by the district office. First, uh, the support of the secretariat. At present, the district council secretariat is um, lacking manpower. Uh, on one occasion, uh, we have to get other people among district councillors uh, to um, draw to to write the minutes. I really don't know how can the administration. Uh, Enhance support uh, given to the district council. That's manpower. Another point, another matter is on funding. Now, um, the 
um, allocation of funds among district councils are usually um, by and large the same, but uh, the size of district councils vary. Population in under different district councils vary. So, shouldn't you have a bit of um, um, adjustment and variation between district councils in terms of funding? The third is support to individual district councillors. Say uh, one spend four thousand dollars on petrol. As for the uh, reimbursement given to district councillors, travelling expenses is not included, so they have to spend uh, out of their own pockets. Shouldn't you review that if you are do it on business, you go back to? Uh, the district council to call to hold meetings or you conduct visits, uh, not on your own but uh, on duty visits. Um, shouldn't uh, that um, the traveling expenses be reimbursed? Let me now turn to population. Population is important because we are to serve the people. If there is an increase in population, adding more seats uh, is reasonable. But if the administration just consider the total number uh, of population within the district first, then the administration has not taken into account um, geographical or community differences. Say um, um, a stark example. Is the um, uh, islands district Lama and Potoi um, is in one are in one constituency, but if you uh, travel from Potoi to Lama, you can only take a boat, and that will take more than an, more than half an hour, and you may uh, suffer from seasickness. And if you want a bigger constituency, then you will take up more islands, a few more islands, and you need a helicopter instead of a boat. So, um, the, shouldn't the administration accept that the population is lower than the population quota? And in some district, when population is bigger, then you need to. Add more seeds. Say, for example, Tong Chong. I think the first part is not uh, to be answered by the CMAB. Is about the uh, Home Affairs Bureau. But what about uh, the second part? The first part is about support given to the district council and the operation of district council. That's the ambit of the Home Affairs Bureau, and we will refer the members to you. To the HAB, um, according to understanding with the HAB, um, uh, we are said uh, to be just giving an equal number of staff uh, to each district, but that in fact is not the case. As for funding per district. Uh, usually, it is based on uh, the population, the nature of work, the workload, and the nature of the uh, community. Uh, but that is only by way of uh, information. And um, increase in population and um, geographical um, uh, factors, and also community factors. In fact, we do take into uh, community the uniqueness of the community, even if the population varies from the quota by more than twenty five percent and there is uh, the um, uh, such factors are still taken into account and you can see the examples in appendix in the appendix in fact, we've already incorporated that in the population variation. We have exhausted the first round of questions. Today we have two parts. Today's meeting two parts. The first part is to meet with the deputations and exchange views. Um, and after this, we will continue 
to talk to the administration on the order. I just want to know whether members want to ask a second round apart from Assembly Lao. Now your question should be um, pertaining to the views expressed by the deputations. In other words, I will ask the deputations to leave and then we'll continue our meeting. So please um, I'll focus on that. Two more. Emily Lau and Tang Kapio. Okay, draw a line there. Three minutes each. Emily Lau. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I may ask about the case of Tong Chong, about the new residential developments. Now, the next election will take place in November 2015. Uh, I want to know that whether the administration knows that there will be a lot more population moving into Tong Chong. It is said so, but it seems that the administration doesn't agree. So is it right to say that uh, despite the possible growth in population, the elected member will simply take on more constituents? And then Mr. Choi Yu Cheo refer to the demarcation of constituency boundaries. It is most controversial and political. Even if you don't answer the question today, Deputy Secretary, you need to address it next year. Make sure that it is highly transparent. Otherwise, you can't simply say that you are being unbiased without anything to back you up. So you need to come up with a mechanism that is convincing. Deputy Secretary, uh, demarcation of boundaries. Of course, as Ms. Lau has said, we try to be as transparent as possible. Certainly, I will refer your views to the uh, EAC. Allow me just to repeat once again that it is a task of the EAC. If members think that the EAC should increase its transparency as, and as to how, uh, I think members can um, Refer your opinions to the EAC so that the EAC can understand how they should improve their transparency. As to the population forecast, maybe Ms. Tang would like to add to my answer. Um, in fact, as I have said, different departments on the basis of their information would forecast the population sizes in different districts in the year 2015, as well as the population sizes in different constituencies. Ms. Tang, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, when we do the calculations, we apply the same yardstick for all the 18 district councils. In other words, um, mid-2015 being the cut-off line, and the same is true for the islands district. We don't deal with it in any special manner. Well, if we want to go back to the example of Tung Chong, we can see that for information submitted by departments to the planning department, some new residential developments will see population uh, will see completion towards second half of twenty fourteen. They will also try to guess how many residents would have moved in before the middle of twenty fifteen. Mr. Chairman, allow me to talk about demarcation of boundaries. The Deputy Secretary has always emphasized that it is for the EAC to decide. What we were emphasizing was that the district officers do play a part. They do intervene. So that's what we want to draw your attention to. It should be transparent. I don't think the district officer shouldn't be talking to the chairman of the EAC behind closed doors, giving him a political analysis. Uh, in this way, we can see that the district officer is seen to be unbiased. It's best if the district officer can make public the recommendations given by the district officer to the EAC. Mr. Tankapio. It is said that the population forecast is 80,000. Uh, 
maybe Miss Chow should be given the floor. It seems that she would like to say something. Miss Chow, it seems that、uh, we haven't got eighty thousand, but I think for twenty ten, the planning department in a paper already mentioned that there were already eighty seven thousand. People, and every year the housing department has got a figure for the number of people residing in pop in public housing estates. So I really can't understand how you arrive of your figure. Now we are talking about 2016. Now for 2015, you say that area 56 will be ready,、um, adding a few thousand more people to the、uh, area. So for Tung Tung North, does it mean that the elected member will have to take care of the new population as well, Mr. Lang? I haven't got the information for the details. Maybe after the meeting, we can study the、uh, information and then we can come back with an overall reply. Deputy Secretary, what about the constituency T zero one? You didn't give a direct reply、um, by not. Giving an answer doesn't mean that you won't care about it, and you will simply refer the case to the DAC. If that is the case, how are you going to resolve the existing problem, Deputy Secretary? We did consider the case of T zero one. I think we need to apply the same mechanism that is the existing mechanism. First of all, we take into account the entire population of the Islands District. That would be the starting point. In other words,、uh, one hundred and forty-eight thousand to be divided by seventeen thousand.、Um, so, according to the population forecast, and taking into account of other factors, the total number of elected seats for Islands District Council should be ten and remain at ten. For T zero one, the population forecast is roughly seventeen thousand, so more or less、uh, close to the population quota. It's been mentioned that T zero one covers a large area, and it means that the elected member for that constituency has a heavy workload. Perhaps、uh, we can sort of、uh, have it studied again when the matter goes to the EAC, Mr. Wong. If I may add a word here, my area would cover the fishermen. For fishermen's compensation claims, they have to come here to seek help, and then there are a lot more land disputes, and then、um, airport noise, and then for land town, we have got a lot of excavation underground, to that was done by the WSD. So、um, we have shortage of water in the streams. So air, land, and sea. Every day I have to work until eleven, twelve. Just me alone cannot really cover that much. So please revert to the nineteen ninety constituency、uh, demarcations. It's not easy for me to make copies. I'll try to make it available to you. So please split T O. One into two, so that they have、uh, Tung Chung Tai O and then Land House South, and then for the Manu Works projects under the HAD, I'm really angry about that, but I don't want to dwell in, on the details. Let me thank the nine deputations individuals who have come here to give us valuable comments.、Um, Mr. Wong, it's fine if you submit copies of your map. To us, so that the deputy secretary can have more information.、Um, let me once again thank the deputations and individuals for coming here on a Saturday morning and tell us about your comments on the amendment order. I'm sure your views will benefit our examination of this piece of subsidiary legislation. Thank you. So you may be excused. And then we'll continue with our own deliberation. So we can have an overall discussion after getting the views from the deputations. So we can have further exchange of views with the administration.
members anything to say? Yes, Mr. Ho. From the information given by the administration, 113 constituencies will have their boundaries being sort of um, adjusted, or rather have their have uh, revisions being carried out to 113 constituencies. Um, if you apply a very rigid uh, yardstick, then it means that uh, for every term, there will be frequent revisions to the demarcations. Even for a re-elected councillor, uh, he may have to attend to a different constituency. For the system of single seat, single vote, the purpose is to enhance the bond between um, the elected member and the constituency. So I strongly urge for PR system to be invoked. And then for the rural areas, you can resort to the single seat, single vote system. And then you can maintain a stable relationship between the councillor and the local population. And it benefits the development as well. I think you made the same point last time, Deputy Secretary. If we are to change the electoral arrangements for district councils, I think we need to have a long discussion and we need to consult the public. I'm afraid this cannot be done within the framework of this order. Uh, in 2014, we need to examine the demarcation of boundaries. And by increasing the number of seats, it means that we certainly have to redraw the boundaries. Um, so I'm afraid your point cannot be taken up within this exercise. Maybe the argument can be sort of uh, discussed on another forum. Mr. Tang. Um, I want to know what's going to happen. Will the administration carry out any changes despite the deputations telling us what they feel about the order? Well, after uh, deputations have spoken to us, of course, we can take on board their views. We can form our views. The administration may also form its own view in the light of what has been said. If the administration thinks that uh, in some areas that it there can be a change, or say, for example, for Tong Chong and for constituency T01, if they buy the idea, then they may seek an amendment. Um, even if the administration is not going to carry out any revisions, we may also seek to do so. So it works both ways. But of course, um, we we have to consider the arguments and come to our view. Deputy Secretary, anything to say by way of a reply? Mr. Chairman, uh, a lot has been said about the case of the Islands District, um, as stated in our letter submitted yesterday. Time and again, we studied the population forecast The population forecast includes what Ms. Chow has said. Ms. Chow has submitted a paper to the Secretariat. She has, she has included a lot of uh, uh, figures. We studied the figures. We still believe that the figures we have been using internally are accurate, objective, and reliable. Emily Lang. Mr. Chairman, I agree with what Sid Ho has said. It seems that the DS is simply repeating himself. Even if we haven't got time for the coming election, I think you need to collect your views and then uh, start the discussion. Don't just dismiss it by saying that it should be taken up elsewhere. If you don't start the discussion, it will be very difficult. I know that uh, if you want to make a change, you need to do a lot of things, and you do need to consult. That's good, and that's right. 
when there is a change in population, a district is very big. And it is, uh, if it is represent representative uh, proportional arrangement, then um, uh, even if there is a minor, uh, there is a change, then um, there will not be a big problem. People will not just focus their attention on the bus stop in front of a store or the RCP next door. Uh, people will have a broader perspective. They will look at the whole district. I think there is a need to discuss the matter. You you can't just ask members to sort it out themselves. Yeah, well, I, I will. Yes, I'll bring this view back to the relevant authorities for consideration. KK Fong, I support the view that uh, in the new territories, in particular in the islands. Uh, more say uh, one one more seat is needed. You see that they have a lot of problems. They have to uh, look after a very big area. And I, the second point, though, is not entirely relevant. It is something I have to say. We are hurt by the redrawing of boundaries. A an ADPL member. As a constituency cut into three, and in a, on another occasion, a uh, constituency is cut into two, and therefore our members lost in the election. I think you're biased. You are against us. Why you cut our constituencies and not other people's constituencies? Sometimes you cut a district into a dumbbell. Now you have a very big. Um, uh, on the top and very big uh, on the bottom and in the middle, it uh, is very thin. It is just a road. Now the size of um, constituencies, constituents, constituency A, and then constituency B, and then constituency uh, A again. So if you are in constituency B, then in fact you will have the same. Um, constituency on your top and also uh, at your feet. Now that's in Sam Shui Po. Even if you say um, you are not biased, I think you are using uh, your, you're trying to um, uh, reduce our, to, to, to uh, change the election result by redrawing the boundary. That's gerrymandering. And I think in the UK, that's a very, uh, that's um, one of the uh, problems. Yes, concerning drawing boundaries, we've discussed that many times before, but that is not within the order. Within this order, we can only speak on the um, number and also the population. The secretary. Uh, should reflect this view, and he has already said that he'll reflect uh, the views many times before, and uh, this uh, can be followed up by the constitutional affairs panel. Do any other members want to speak on this point? If not, then um, concerning the numbers. Uh, concerning um, NX six, uh, among four hundred and twelve, uh, seats, thirteen are below the quota, and uh, twelve are above the quota. And some um, of uh, the shortfall and exceedance are rather big. Say in Yunlong, the uh, there are many constituencies exceeding the twenty five percent variation, and the biggest. Is forty three percent, 
exceeding the quota by 43 percent in Kun Tong. Say uh, you, your yardstick is 17,000, and the population is more than that by 43 percent, nearly 50 percent. That's nearly nearly 8,000 more in that constituency. Would there be any improvement after you've added the number of seats to the the uh, district council? Will you bring relief to this situation? Now we can see that in the last term, in certain constituencies, the population is more than the population quota by uh, a, a substantial margin. The increase in number will help to bring relief. Say, for example, Kun Tong. In Kun Tong, we propose to add two seats to Kun Tong. So, with the increase in the total number of seats in Kun Tong, then uh, we also need to consider whether there are specific reasons for maintaining a uh, bigger constituency uh, which is above uh, the allowed limit. That is something to be considered by the EAC. By the same token, if we look at Junlong, in a certain existing constituency, the population is more than the yardstick or benchmark. We propose that uh, Yunlong uh, will have ten, uh, will have four more seats, and this, uh, we believe, will help to bring relief to that situation when the EAC um, draws up the new boundaries for the constituencies. Concerning your population projection, it is based on the horizon of mid-2015. Suppose, in reality, you can see that, say, in early six, 2016, the population will be increased substantially. In a certain constituency, will you uh, take that into account? But according to your explanation, I've just heard uh, you will not take that into account. But I think Tong Chong highlights this problem. Say in uh, Kun Tong, Yun Long, the constituencies may be. Um, just uh, standing side by side each other, but that is still very different. Uh, the situation in Tongchong is very different. By 2016, there may be a substantial increase in population. How can you address this problem so that district councillors uh, can? Uh, be more effective in serving the people. Any estimate uh, is forward-looking, but and uh, it is impossible to be hundred percent correct. We need to use a particular point in time as the benchmark, and that uh, provides certainty. And that is a scientific approach, and that also is fair. In considering the uh, number of seats, we uh, will um, conduct a population forecast at a point in time which is the closest to the election. Now the uh, members may see that there are a lot of developments and there are new buildings put up. We also follow uh, the guideline and we follow the uh, set uh, the, the appointed uh, point of time to do the assessment. 
um, individual councillors may have a certain estimate on the population or on the um, population take up rate. But if we look back into history, such estimates were not um, entirely correct. There were discrepancies. Well, that's entirely reasonable because an estimate is just an estimate. We have considered various means. Um, anyways, there has to be a method based on um, scientific um, analysis. Say, if we use the population of mid-2015 as the basis, and then uh, if people look into 2016, 2017, then the variation from the reality may be even bigger. Uh, you can you know that uh, for the private sector, the sale of units is not within the control of the government. The developer may have his own plan. Say if the market is good, they may sell more today. Or if the market is not too good, they may just hold up the flats. The variation is big. So in estimating the population take-up rate, um, it is based on previous data. It is not just a figure plucked from the air. I think that's a more uh, proper approach. Mr. Tang, it seems that I'm just haggling this point all the time concerning the islands. Now, uh, if um, they don't increase the number of seats, they really cannot address the aspirations of the new town and also the villages. Uh, just redrawing the boundary we cannot do. Now, you, if you have Cheng Chao North South, if you uh, merge Cheng Chao North South and give the seats to Lantau, then the population in Cheng Chao is um, 25,000 odd people, even bigger than Po Tat. And people will take this as an example that its population is more than a yardstick of 17,000. So there is no room to redraw the boundary in order to solve the problem. As for Lantau, service is really um, affected. Service by councillors is really affected. Will you go back and think about it? You shouldn't just um, use this letter as a final answer. The Deputy Secretary. Well, Chairman, I don't have anything more to add. I've already explained our consideration. Ms. Emily Lau. Chairman, you're right. You ask us to focus on NX6 numbers. You can see the deviations. You can see that your yardstick or benchmark is really meaningless. Some well, there are four hundred or so, four hundred or so, four hundred and twelve. Here is just twenty-five. Here are just twenty-five, but they are still many. Uh, you really need to go back to consider proportional representation arrangement. Just a small change will uh, cause a big variation. Uh, you say there are just about 20 or so. I hope the Secretary will not just repeat his arguments. Go back and think about it. Say, Tong Chong, if many have moved in by then, and uh, the councillor will have a lot more work to do. You really need to consider the overall you, uh, problem of Hong Kong. You, can't, you shouldn't just be patchy in your work. Well, I have nothing more to add. I think uh, Mr. Ms. Lau um, uh, focuses on representation, proportional arrangement. I th uh, we will go back uh, and think about it. Okay, if members don't have further comments on, on the uh, overall uh, principles in relation to this order, I think um, we've already given our views uh, clearly, and let us move on to close by close study of uh, order or the order. Shall we refer to the markup copy CB two eighteen sixteen twelve thirteen bracket o one? 
It's just very simple. We just look at Schedule Three, Part One. It's all about numbers. So I give the floor to the administration. Uh, the DS. Ms. Tang, if I may very briefly talk about the various provisions in the um, substitute legislation, and then the DFJ can also supplement. Uh, first of all, we would like to say that um, it will apply to the district council ordinary election in 2015. Um, and it will come into operation on the 1st of January 2016. So, um, since we have to prepare for the 2016 term um, in the lower in the second half of 2015, therefore. Um, in the commencement clause, we says that it will come into operation on the day on which the resolution of the LegCo approving this order is published in the Gazette. Um, can we take them one by one? So first of all, commencement date. Any further questions? In other words, It will come into operation on the 1st of January 2016. No questions then. Clause 2, very simple, just to set out the scope of the amendment, namely the District Council's ordinance in relation to the Schedule 3. And that takes us back to the markup copy. <coughs> Ms. Tang, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For Section 3, it sets out all the changes to be made to the number of elected members in nine district councils. As we have already said, we'll be revising the number of elected members in nine districts only. Um, they are repetitive. I won't go into the details. So we are repealing the original number, and then we uh, substitute it by a new number so that we know about the number of elected members. Please adopt our marked up copy as the basis. Sure, Mr. Chairman. Central and Western District Council, no change to the number of elected members. Eastern District Council, as far as this order is concerned, no change. County City District Council, an addition of two. Instead of 22, there will be 24. Kuntong District Council increased from 35 to 37 seats. For Samshibu District Council, number of elected members to be increased from 21 to 23. No change to the number of seats in Southern District Council. Same is true for Wan Chai District Council, as well as the Wang Tai Sin District Council. Yao Chi Mong District Council, the number to be increased from 17 to 19. Islands District Council, we suggest that it should be kept at 10. Kwai Ching District Council, again, our proposal is to keep it at 29. North District Council to be increased from 17 to 18. Sai Kung District Council, the increase is from 24 to 27. Sha Tin District Council, an increase from 36 to 38. Taipu District Council, the number will remain at 19. Chun Wan District Council, an increase from 17 to 18. Tumon District Council, no change. Yunnan District Council, an increase. Um, and there will be 35 instead of 31 seats. Members, any questions? No? I understand that probably for Eastern District Council and Wan Chai District Council, there will be a merger. Not, not really a merger, but there will be some adjustments. I want to know whether you're go coming back with another order. Mr. Chairman, as I have reported at the last meeting, the latest position is that I think on the 3rd of October, if I remember correctly, Eastern District Council 
carriage a motion to support the so-called uh, the two DCCA option. In other words, they would like to see C DCCA C16 and C18 being transferred to Wan Chai District Council. If it is to be endorsed, then we will come back with a new order for the electrical. Well, in this case, the ends are cross by cross scrutiny. But then, just now, many members have spoken about the case of Tong Chong, and the administration has promised to consider it. Um, but then, I think, according to your uh, paper, you are telling us that there is no basis for any increase. For the second half of mid, sorry, uh, please tell us exactly what is your forecast for the population in the second half of 2015 in Tongchong. If uh, the figure is over 50, um, then we will be concerned. So. You need to give us a paper ASAP. Mr. Chairman, I agree. I want to know when we are taking it back to the LegCo. If they would like to speak, then they can clarify their position. When would it be? Our schedule is as follows. Either we go back to the LegCo meeting on the 6th or the 13th of November. It is better for the administration to answer this question. Ms. Tang or Deputy Secretary, when would you like to go back to the Uh We will answer the Chair's question ASAP. When would you like to come back to the LegCo? It's fine for us either the 6th or the 13th of November. I think that was, that was the position of the administration in the beginning. I hope that you will do it ASAP because if you want to go back to the LegCo on the 6th of November, it means that we have to give a report to the House Committee on the 25th of October. If members are not happy with your replies, then um, members may um, seek an amendment, and they have to do it before the 30th of October. I think you will make arrangements to allow us to speak, even if there are no amendments. I don't know whether there will be amendments. Uh, if there are amendments, please tell us ASAP. Even if there are no amendments, uh, please make sure that we can speak. Yes, I will speak, and then other members will speak, and then the MB will reply. So, um, members, would you like to have it on the 6th or the 13th? The 6th, earlier better. What about other members? No comments? Then we'll fix it for the 6th of November. And on the 25th of October, we are going to report to the HC. If you would like to move an amendment to the content of the order, your deadline is the 30th of October. So for today's meeting, I think we are at the last item, AOB. Anything under AOB? No. Then I declare that our meeting is adjourned, and we hope that the administration will come back early with a paper. Thank you.